Hello, hello. Thank you. Um, okay, my name is Serge Majorov, um, and I'm the TD at Blackboard VFX Studios. Um, and welcome, and I want to welcome you to my talk, The Disastrous Life of the Technical Director. Um, uh, a little disclaimer. Uh, when um, I'm very excited to be on this stage, so I talk uh, a bit slower, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, now, a little bit about us. Uh, we're a um, boutique studio from Israel, and when I say boutique, what I mean is that uh, compared to the other players in our market, uh, we're comparably small, and yet uh, we deliver uh, large-scale productions. Some of our clients are well-known companies, uh, we, last year, we won the Webby Awards uh, for the most effective ad of the year, uh, and in which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, we also create music videos, uh, which also won multiple awards. And at some point, we won the Berlin Music Video Awards, and we beat Rihanna. So that felt uh, nice. <laughs> um, uh, Obviously, our main production uh, tool is Blender, uh, but with a combination, in a combination with After Effects. And what I want to talk about today uh, is challenges and frustrations. Uh, well, this talk is actually an excuse for me to whine about my daily job, uh, but in a good way, you know. So let me tell you a little story. So we had a project with a woman who has the best day of her life. It was amazing. She was so successful. Everybody just wanted to be with her. And she was so attractive that even a dog comes over and humps her leg. Now, the producer, she asked me, well, can you create a CG dog? that does that. <laughs> and uh, maybe for you it sounds a little bit awkward, but for me as the TD, what it means for me is, well, we need to create a realistic dog, but with a good muscle system for the hips. <laughs> and of course, some uh, dynamic uh, particle system and stuff like that. Now, luckily, this scene didn't cut, uh, didn't end the cut, okay? But we, um, we have to deal with uh, these kind of challenges on our, on our uh, daily, yeah, on our daily basis um, with every new project. And I want to talk about uh, some challenges we had and how we decided to tackle those. But before that, um, let me show you our showreel. Let's do this. Thank you, thank you. I hope you like it. So I want to begin with the first case study, uh, Puffy. 
I uh, was talking, the scene with the dog earlier, it was part of this, supposed to be part of this project. Um, it's an mattress, American mattress company. And a brief description. Two storylines about the consequences of good or bad sleep. And we had quite a few uh, debates and challenges uh, in this project. Uh, so let's mo watch the movie itself, and then I'll break it down for you. When you wake up on an uncomfortable mattress, you feel groggy. When you feel groggy, you get a concussion. When you get a concussion, you pick a fight with your toaster. When you pick a fight with your toaster, your toaster fights back and blows your power out. When your toaster blows your power out, you turn into something from a villain movie. And when you turn into something from a villain movie, you get arrested for arson. Don't get arrested for arson. Get rid of your uncomfortable mattress and upgrade to a puffy mattress. When you sleep on a puffy mattress, you wake up feeling refreshed. When you wake up feeling refreshed, you develop the skills of a master ninja. When you develop the skills of a master ninja, you realize you can do anything. When you realize you can do anything, you solve Einstein's theory of time travel. When you solve Einstein's theory of time travel, people hand you briefcases full of cash. When people hand you briefcases full of cash, you spice up your life. Get a puffy mattress and spice up your life. Puffy provides you with the best sleep ever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, the challenges of uh, this project. Um, the two main ones, uh, whether we had to decide whether to use practical or post effects, because uh, practical effects are many times um, more believable uh, and more efficient. And of course, we have uh, the destruction scene. Now, I want to play a game with you. And it's called... Post or Practical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was uh, rendered with Eevee, by the way. <laughs> so, let's begin with a food castle. On one hand, um, we talked to the set designer, and he told us uh, that food castle, a real-life food castle, is fairly expensive. And we didn't have enough um, creative control over the process. On the other hand, CG food is really hard to create. Uh, you, ne you need to create believable, delicious food that will look well in CG, and it's quite hard. So can you guess, was it uh, practical or CG? <laughs> well, uh, thank you. There's someone who knows the answer, so uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it was in CG, of course, yeah. Uh, 20 points for whoever. Um, Lucky for us, we stumbled upon a pastry pack on uh, CG Trader, along with some 3D models from uh, Polygon uh, of uh, the famous uh, Andrew Price. And we created a real scaled uh, cardboard castle for the actress to interact with. And this is the shot. On to the next one. So we have the burning toaster scene. Uh, the actress takes a burning toaster and throws it into a sink full of water. And that's quite dangerous. So what do you think? Post or practical? Okay. So it was practical. <laughs> um, yeah, we hired a company that specializes in uh, exploding things. And uh, we want... <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we wanted uh, to make it practical because um, it was better for uh, the actress. Um, we, wanted it to be, uh, wa we wanted this scene to be as believable, as believable as possible. And when the actress actually holds a burning toaster, she feels the danger. So <laughs> we endangered the actress for the sake of the scene. Um, let me show you how it looks like uh, behind the scenes. Chef, 
Yeah, just funny. <clears throat> and by the way, um, ah, oh, and, and this shout, uh, of course, we use some After Effects for the electricity. Uh, on to the next one, the kitchen smashing. Now, post or practical? Yeah, of course, it's post. It's CG, okay? <laughs> really. So we had a clean plate of a clean table uh, for us to um, create a CD layer on top of that uh, clean plate. And um, because we wanted consistency, uh, we told the set designer uh, which kitchenware and food to leave on the table and which not. Um, and we wanted uh, to pick up kitchenware that we can create, to, that we can recreate in CG. Uh, so we needed uh, fairly manageable uh, objects. And of course, we had a debate whether to um, go with the uh, milk jar, because then we have to mix uh, our project with some fluid simulation. So, but we went for it. Uh, so this is a test of uh, the recreated uh, kitchenware and food uh, on top of uh, live footage. And we went for the fracture branch, um, made the physics over there. By the way, if anyone knows what's going on with that and uh, 2.8, no, no, okay. <laughs> Man, bummer. Uh, and this is a, a short breakdown uh, behind that shot. You can see the recreated um, food and kitchenware uh, in slow-mo, and of course some smoke and debris um, for the realism. And this is the colored shot. And uh, by the way, the stunt lady was actually a dude in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't believe anything. It's, it's like we lie to people. <laughs> so let's go move on to the next case study. Bazan refineries. Bazan uh, is the largest energy uh, company in Israel, and they needed to work on their public relationship. So uh, they had a campaign with uh, pelicans and a stork. Um, a brief description, it's, uh, it's about pelicans that fly over uh, Bazan's refineries and they like the air, um, and there's a stork. Um, before we watch the movie, a small warning. Uh, most of the jokes in Hebrew uh, didn't translate well to the English one. We actually dubbed this movie just for this conference. Uh, so um, so let's, let's watch the movie. What is the mask for? The air around here. But when we flew over Antwerp and said Rotterdam's refineries, you didn't wear the mask. But in Europe, the air is so... What? Polluted? The refineries here are much cleaner than in Europe. I agree. I'm also a fan of this area. Take off your mask. <gasps> For real? For real. Yeah. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah. So we had quite a few challenges in this one. Um, you've seen a big amount of characters. Uh, there was a scene with over 13. Um, we had to be super organized for uh, the render farm. Um, and we had to create hair seam for the birds. Now, let's begin with the uh, amount of birds. Uh, we had to create a specific uh, pipeline just for this movie um, because we had to be as tidy as possible uh, for the render farm. Uh, almost every project that we create ends uh, up in a, in a render farm. It's faster, it's uh, way more efficient. Uh, and um, because there were so many characters, we had to hire lots of animators just for this project. 
But the problem is that uh, in Israel, we don't have enough good uh, Blender animators, so we had to go with uh, people from other software, uh, particularly from Maya. Um, so we had to use lots of alembics, um, huge amount of alembics. Uh, so we had to create a super tight and organized pipeline just for that, because the, there were many files, uh, many, many exchanges, and uh, it's quite easy to mess around. Now here's uh, an example of a scene. Um, one scene consists of lots of proxies. Every character has its own proxy. Every proxy has its own alembic. All the scenes connected to one proxy of lighting and environmental textures. Uh, that way we can uh, maintain consistency of lighting and physics and scalability along the movie. And everything is connected to one uh, central folder uh, of textures. Now, the reason for that is that when we upload everything to uh, the render farm, uh, we want it to be uh, uploaded only once. We can't upload every scene and uh, multiple textures multiple times. And of course, it gave us the flexibility uh, to change anything uh, or any part of the pipeline without screwing up everything else on the farm. Or less, you'll get pink atrocities. Um, yeah. Some caveats. Um, alembic swap. It's fairly easy uh, to swap alembics in Blender. Oh, and to that matter with uh, other mesh uh, uh, caches. But when you have to swap alembics for multiple characters with mul multiple objects like uh, body, uh, scarf, or feathers, and then it comes a bit cumbersome. Uh, and sometimes even uh, you have to do it manually. So lucky for us, we have. Uh, in-house coder, uh, Adi, say hi. <laughs> and she created an add-on just for that. And the other problem we had, the texture path, because everything is centralized, um, Blender doesn't like to move around uh, libraries. Um, it, and it was really hard to organize uh, all the texture layers uh, around the project. And I found out that the easiest and fairly weird way to do that was, and stay with me on that, to pack the file, to unpack it, and then it creates a folder with all the textures, delete the unpacked textures, and then you get this pink atrocity. Uh, that, that way you know that it works. And then find the missing files in the right uh, centralized folder. And then don't forget uh, to do it in a relative path, because uh, you can get pink scenes on your render farm. Only this time, it's not that funny, because you paid for it, and you uh, lost your time. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah, pink atrocity. <laughs> uh, so, lucky for us, our in, um, in house coder, again, Adi, uh, she created this uh, little add on uh, that uh, takes all those steps into one click. By the way, you can, uh, if you want, uh, to download and uh, play with those add ons. It's on our website, on uh, our GitHub, uh, blendervfx.com. It's uh, clickbait. Uh, right over here, and yeah. So let's be, uh, let's continue with the uh, birds themselves. Uh, so here are some designs, look dev, and we finally got those three guys. Initially, we didn't want to, I I didn't want to mess around with with particles, but uh, here we are, and we had to create uh, feathers and uh, fur and stuff like that. And then I wanted to try these characters with some animation. And boy, there's something that uh, goes wrong with uh, the pelican's belly. I think it's flickering. And I thought that I was just imagining this. So I created a specific OpenGL with spikes to see if it happens again. Yeah. 
So I've got this yellow weird uh, character. And as you can see, it just flickers around. So this began my horrible era of bugs. <laughs> so I was a good boy. Uh, oh, apparently it was a bug with interpolate, interpolated uh, children. Uh, I don't know uh, what happened. Uh, so of course I'm a good boy. I went over and uh, reported the bug. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to say that Blended Developers are amazing. Uh, most of my bugs, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of my bugs reports uh, were fixed fairly uh, fast. But the problem is that within a tight schedule and a tight production, I can't afford even uh, to wait for a bug fix even for a day because uh, the client doesn't care. Um, so I have to fix it in, in my own uh, way. So, okay. Oh, okay, I have that problem with the interpolated children. <sighs> Let's brush it again, but with a simple method. And then, oh boy, it's black. Another bug. And then, okay, okay, so I have, the, I have that problem. Uh, okay, let's try, maybe it's something with um, textual spacing. And now I have a tiger bird. <sighs> so, after quite some frustrations, I just found out that uh, without the texture of the body, it looked the same. So I hoped, and I prayed for the render gods, that no one will notice. And they listened, the old and the new ones. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the production went well, and uh, the client uh, was happy, and no one won't, uh, noticed. So uh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> so on to the next and the last uh, case study that I want to talk about. Uh, this was the, actually the ad uh, that I uh, begin with. Um, that won the Webby Awards. Um, so, a brief description. Uh, cute little brains show what uh, lack of sleep does to them. So let's watch the movie. This is your brain when you enjoy a sweet night's sleep on a nectar mattress. <coughs> this is your brain when you sleep on a regular mattress. <coughs> While Nectar Mattresses' unique technology provides you with a good, solid sleep, which is much needed for your brain to properly function, not getting enough sleep can actually hurt your brain. Research proves that a lack of sleep lowers brain function, causing symptoms like inability to concentrate, excessive eating, low sex drive, and being a total <laughs> Don't believe a man in pajamas? Believe science. We took out the brains of famous world leaders. We gave each of them a brand new nectar mattress and let them try it out for a year. Did it have an effect on our supreme leaders? See for yourself. So if you have a brain and you like to sleep, there's nothing to think about. Click here and order yourself a nectar now. Get along just fine now. Oh yeah, world peace. So hot. Make America sleep again. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, by the way, you can see that actor uh, for a few seconds uh, on Netflix on uh, Iron Fist as soldier number two. <laughs> so, uh, the main challenge uh, in this project was uh, to create a really flexible rig for all the characters. Now, you'll see it in a moment. Let's see some uh, designs. Uh, so, those are the brain, some look dev, uh, this is Trump, uh, an iteration uh, of the design, um, weird Putin, and the happy brain. Finally, we got uh, the final design, uh, the tired and the happy one. And we decided to create one rig for all. Okay? So, 
uh, it was a risky move because all the brains are actually quite distinguishable uh, from each other, and they have different characteristics. But we went for it uh, for the uh, sake of efficiency. Um, we made different shape keys for different characters on the same mesh. So this is the happy brain. And we went on, and this is the tired one. By the way, this is my favorite brain, I mean, because he gets a bad rap. I mean, uh, he's the greatest. And I want you to guess whose brain is the next one. Kim, OK. <laughs> and who is the next one? Yeah, this is Trump. This is actually his uh, real brain. We had the research, and uh, this is how it looks. <laughs> um, of course, every character has its own uh, texture. And a uh, uh, fun fact, uh, the tired texture and uh, um, Putin's texture, uh, they're actually the same. I don't know how it works. I hope he, no one's going to kill me or something. From <laughs> uh, and of course, we had some um, hair iterations. We were experimenting with that. Uh, but eventually, we got those little cute guys um, that you saw in the movie. Um, so yeah, so I want to end this talk uh, about a uh, mistake we had. Uh, you can see on that board, I'm going to show that, uh, there's a small Easter egg with a joke in it. <laughs> so 2 plus 2 equals 4, I can do math. So uh, that was a silly joke that we wanted to put on that board. Uh, it was uh, b because there was a meme at that time um, with that joke of a first year uh, grader or something. And uh, we thought that was funny, but with the success of the ad, we got lots of complaints. <laughs> Apparently, uh, math is not a laughable subject uh, <laughs> for you to know. So what we learned from that is uh, hide your Easter eggs better. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to say um, on this stage uh, here in Amsterdam, don't do drugs. <laughs> Thank you.